Hello, my fine friends. Welcome to another edition of Rahalas Tava. This week, very excitingly, with the wonderful and very funny and entertaining Annika Rice. Um, I think you're going to enjoy this one, especially if you remember Treasure Hunt uh, and Challenge Annika and all those things, but lots more cool stuff in there as well. Don't forget, we're doing live Rahalas Tavas at the Clapham Grand. May the 24th, one of the guests will be Sarah Kendall from off of Taskmaster. May the 31st, in the afternoon, one of the guests will be Johnny Vegas. June the 7th, no guest booked yet. June the 14th, the crew from No Such Thing as a Fish. No, first, uh, f- uh, we'll be joining me all together as well as someone else. And on July the 5th, we will be talking to Robin Asquith from the Confessions movie and there's much more, um, plus another guest. There'll be two guests at each of these. You can either come to the Clapham Grand, buy an actual ticket and be socially distanced in the audience. Uh, still plenty of tickets left for all of them. Or you can come online and watch it live streamed for a small fee or you can wait till it comes out as a podcast. It's up to you, but please support us and the Clapham Grand if you can after these difficult times. If you can't, the podcast will always come out for free eventually. Anyway, but you may miss some saucy, salacious moments that get edited out. So it's always better to watch it live if you can. And I'm glad to say you can do that from anywhere in the world with these shows, which is a very exciting development. Please go to richhang.com slash gigs and you can see all the links and any more confirmed guests that might have arrived between the time of recording this and you hearing me and watching me say it. Anyway, let's sit back, relax and enjoy Rahalastapa with the absolutely amazing, of course I'm in love with her, Annika Rice. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a man who's still two weeks from a haircut. It's Richard Herring. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, my fine friends, to uh, another episode of Rich Herring's Let's Snooker Tomorrow podcast. Uh, Unusually, if you're listening to the podcast, we're recording this on a Monday night, which is usually snooker night. There'll be a lot of very confused men in the chat room of the live Twitch feed many of whom the only woman they've seen is me 11 so they're going to have quite a time tonight uh, though i was hanging around with bernhard the hereditary prince of baden uh, prince donatus of hesse and philip prince of hohello lagenberg at uh, prince philip's funeral we, we were the guys at the back we were the last in the the guest list they all call it rahalastapa so we'll see if that catches on um big news this is the first episode of series 21 of Rahalas Tapa. It's, it's quite arbitrary where I put that mark now, but I think I'm going to make series of 25s. And this is something like, it must be number 326, something like that. So here we are. It's a new series. We've got a fantastic guest coming up. Uh, and um, let me tell you what's going on. I mentioned hair and uh, my son's just, he's three years old. He's not 28 years old. He's just got a hairbrush and he wanted to brush my hair the other night. And this is how he brushed it. This is how much hair I've got, first of all, for the people who can view it. Um, he brushed all of my hair right down in front of my face. Uh, and I tried to move it away. And he said, don't move it, daddy. You look like a rock star. Uh, now, I don't know how many rock stars my three-year-old son has seen. And it is a little bit like what Kurt Cobain used to do. And it probably looks a bit like what Kurt Cobain looks like right about now. So, it, it, uh, but I'm a rock star. That's official. It's uh, it's all been sorted out. Uh, I've uh, My other weird podcast, uh, Stone Clearings, had a bit of a disaster this week. Uh, that a, a guy in my uh, village has uh, taken against me putting stones in cans and uh, threw quite a lot of them back onto the field. Um, I think it's going to work out OK. Um, you know, it's hard to take umbrage with him, really. It was quite an eccentric thing to do. But then taking all the stones off the field is quite an eccentric thing to do. So it's it's hard for the village to really get on side with either of us, I think, in this battle of the stones. But it was heartbreaking on Thursday when it happened. I'm coming to terms with it. I have been rebuilding this. The, the main can was the one that was started by Michael, who sadly died last year, who I'd meet on the field. He was like my sensei. So I was very upset about that one being destroyed, but I have rebuilt it as best as I can. All those stones you can see in that picture are gone now. Uh, and uh, in other bad news, uh, I've been uh, given officially a blue tick on Twitter, which I'd never have asked for. Uh, I didn't request it. They just sent me an email saying, well done, you've got a blue tick. I don't want a blue tick. I like the fact that for t- 
13 years, people haven't been quite sure whether it's really me tweeting or just some very committed idiot who wants to pretend to be me and has somehow got away with it for all that time. I mean, very committed. Have you seen how much I tweet? Uh, it's insane. So it, it feels kind of sad to be accepted. I don't feel cool anymore. Uh, I don't know if you can get rid of a blue tick. And I don't know what the advantages of blue ticks are. I, You know, someone told me I could direct message anyone else with a blue tick. It hasn't been working for me. I've tried. I've been trying to get some high profile guests and it hasn't hasn't worked. So I want that blue tick taken away, Ian, Twitter. Right. While we're talking, uh, remember, we are doing some live gigs at the Clapham Grand. Uh, 24th of May, 31st of May, 7th of June, 14th of June and 5th of July. I can announce two of the guests on the 31st of May, which is a it's a bank holiday. It's a matinee, 2 p.m. Johnny Vegas will be joining me along with one other guest. Uh, and we only do one, one show a week, don't we? Uh, and on 5th of July, Robin Asquith from off of the Confessions of series, as well as many other dozens and dozens of films well worth, and TV shows, well worth following on Twitter for both uh, seeing how amazing this man looks still today uh, and also his many reminiscences about his work. He's a, going to be an excellent guest. So book those tickets. If you go to richtrain.com slash gigs, you can book tickets. You can come to the theatre and watch it in person. Uh, with another 349 socially distanced people in quite a big theatre, so there'll be plenty of room, you don't have to be scared. Uh, or you can watch it online. You can buy tickets for either of those at richshane.com slash gigs. Give it a try. Um, I'm feeling a lot better. I get a bit tired about 5pm. I was just telling my guest. But, you know, and then I do a podcast and I get perked up. So, my guest this week is probably best known for her appearance on the television quiz show Heads or Tails. Hosted by Justin Lee Collins, of course. Will you please welcome the amazing, I can't believe she's here. I'm so delighted uh, and excited. It's Annika Rice, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is. Hello, Annika. Hello. How lovely to be here. Thank you very much for letting me into your boudoir. It's very... Oh, on this so many, You've been in my boudoir so many times without knowing Annika. That, uh, I know. It's lo I know. It's love and, and the nation. It must be a very weird feeling to know. Uh, how that's been going. Do you remember, before we get on to everything else, do you remember appearing on Heads or Tails with Justin Lee Collins? No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I, re I remember, I found it because I Googled you because... What is it even? It's a, It was a show, a game show, where contestants had to flip a coin and guess whether it's heads or tails. And you came, I, go I, I blogged about it and said, <laughs> then Annika Rice came on as some expert in luck. And, a, and the final t the toss, you advised the person... Oh, whether they would go heads or tails. Do you remember it? No. I mean, you've worked with you've worked with all the greats. You've worked with quite a lot of disgraced people because you've been working for so long. None I know. Of, none of the women yeah. get disgraced, do they? But you know, Justin Lee Collins has gone. You know, a little bit off the. Yeah, radar. The, no, there's many people. There's many tracks of my career that I've just airbrushed out now because that, the people are in, literally in prison now. That's not fair, is it? It's not fair that we lose Annika Rice just because of. <laughs> Rolf Harris. Well, that wonderful backstory. But anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you found Heads and Tails. What the hell that is, I've no idea. Oh, well, that's, I'm <laughs> delighted you've forgotten about it. And I'm, I, I, I'm going to be talking about a lot of your more obscure work as well as your Good. better known stuff. Can I take notes while you're doing it? It'd be very useful. Yeah, so you can look at well, save me doing any research. Just go to IMDb. You can see all of the things you've done there. And then, you know, that might, that might help you... Uh, it was a very, I don't think it lasted very long, but I think it was an entire series, which it was literally, it was sort of like deal or no deal, but it was just flipping a coin and then you won if you yeah. got the, if well, you got I'm, it right. I'm glad you've alerted to the nation to that, um, <laughs> Richard, and I'm sure we're, we're grateful. Thank Good. you. Well, it's the best, it was your best work in my opinion. Good. What um, was I wearing? Was uh, I in a jumpsuit? What was it? What was the vibe? I don't know what you... I did watch it, but I haven't rewatched it, so I don't... And I, you know, I was more interested in your skills of trying to guess whether it was heads or tails than, than objectifying you by looking at your clothing, yeah. Annika. I was looking at your brain at that point and whether your which, brain... Which you need a lot of brain for working <laughs> out whether something is a huh or a tuh. I think you got it right, so, you know... <laughs> There we go. So if that proves anything, uh, I was Googling you on my I was gluing you on my bar, blog or searching you on my blog because I the, what, there's one time we've crossed paths in our lives, mm. which was on uh, just by Barnesbridge. I used to run a six mile run uh, from my house in Shepherd's Bush right between the bridges of Hammersmith and Barnes and then back home again. And I passed you about the halfway mark where I'm usually the most tired and I saw you. And then I think I really started to try and run fast to impress you. 
But did I do show re- any re- kind of recognition at all? No, I was going to say, did you did you go home and say, I just saw Richard Herring on the... No, can I the... just say, this interview yeah. isn't going for... So far, heads and tails, nothing. Mm-hmm. You running past me, zero. I mean, it was unlikely you would remember that, Annika. Sometimes I see Claire Balding. <laughs> Um, and I used to have such a crush on Claire Balding. Right. And sometimes she's with her partner, Alice, and she's walking backwards because that's the way she rolls, Claire Balding. <laughs> okay. she, she, she read about it in, or saw it on some Japanese something or other. So she actually walks backwards. Now, had you been doing something like that, Richard? I was running. I, thought, did, you go, I went, did you go home? I don't know who he was. I saw a guy down by Bunsbridge. He was the fastest runner yeah. I've ever Gosh. seen for a short, fat man. I did actually. Yeah, good, good. I'm going to actually now acquiesce and just pretend I know what the hell you're talking Thank about. Thank you. When you said yes. sometimes I see Claire Balding, I wondered whether she was really there back. or whether it was just like in Sixth Sense or something that you just sort no, of see Claire back. Balding. I did tell my entire family that I'd seen this <laughs> astonishingly good looking man ah, good. running along the riverbank. What is it, that's very nice. It was very exciting for me to see you, and that you must have that all the time. I didn't bother you, like I'm sure many people do, and I didn't shout out, oi, rear of the year at you or anything like that. I don't know what people shout. What do they shout? Oi, get in your helicopter. What do they shout at you? Jumpsuit. Stop the clock. Ch- Stop the clock. Cracker. Challenge Annika. I didn't even say. Now. It's funny that it, it is even now. I once got flashed on the riverbank, oh, and um, this man flashed me this was quite a couple of a few decades ago in okay. the 80s it was the 80s flashing good and uh, he flashed me and uh was fumbling around down there flashing me and looked up saw it was me and went oh no it's annika rice and he's <laughs> off into the bushes <laughs> You know, in the old day, I mean, I don't approve of flashing and it's a terrible thing to do. But in the old days, at least men had the decency to do it in person rather than just text their, the pictures of their yeah, penises. I, I found it quite charming. It was an old I, school. I shouted after him, sorry, sorry, I've ruined your flash. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, look, the thing, the first thing I was surprised to discover today as I was researching you is that your name is not Annika Rice and I'm no, I'm very true. very upset about that and no, it's destroyed it's not my fault it's not my fault at all Tell when us... I started when I started doing telly well I'd, I'd started doing telly when I, I worked as a journalist in Hong Kong for a few years and there I was just Annie Rice very happily when I came back and got the job on Treasure Hunt um I got a very stiff letter from Equity saying you cannot trade under the name of Annie Rice because there's an eight-year-old actress in Bristol also called Annie Rice. <laughs> Sorry, fair enough, whatever. I, I didn't, I mean, I hadn't been on telly in Britain. I didn't really know the fame game. I just thought I'll choose any old name. So I went, oh, just call Anne. They said, sorry, the computer says, no, there's already an Anne, except in those days it wasn't computers, obviously. They had to shuffle through files for about five hours. I went, Annabelle, Anushka. I mean, this went on for days because <laughs> I didn't want to suddenly become Prudence Longbottom or something. I wanted to be able to still be Annie Rice. His sister was called Annika. Right. So I just thought, that'll do. And as it happens... Uh, it's made me slightly Swedish in people's yes, but that's eyes, what so I th- I'm quite liking that. <laughs> that's what I 100% thought. I thought there's some, and I think, you know, I think if you'd chosen any other name, it would. there's just something about the name because it's because it's so, it's not unique, obviously it is a name that other people have, but it's unusual enough. I mean, challenge Annie or challenge any of the other ones, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be as good. Annika is a great name. You know, the, your Annika is like your one name and we know who we're talking about, your share. I, know, well, I, I didn't think I'd actually have to be called Annika, but it, it, <laughs> I did. I mean, Equity were on, on it the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, in the first series of Treasure Hunt, Kenneth always says, Annie, are you there? <laughs> and then, you know, you can obviously hear someone telling him off because halfway through he goes, An- 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 Annika, and Annika. <laughs> and then we got the hang of it. And now yeah. I have a name. And actually, my passport is even in the name of Annika Rice by mistake. Someone just <laughs> someone just saw that. That's not Annie Rice. That's Annika Rice. They saw your photo. But it I think it's very confusing. The whole thing. But is it? Do you think? I think it's just an accidental stroke of genius. You know, I wonder. I, I'm sure you'd have been successful, and I'm sure you'd have had a great career regardless. But I think that moment out of everything, that that just that choice of Annika, because it gives you that little. Oh, she's. She's come over from Scandinavia. There's a little I bit know. of something in there. 
I like the Scandinavian vibe a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm there with ABBA. I, I like the thought <laughs> of it a lot. And as you say, Chang's gene yeah. hasn't quite got the ring, I don't think. So, but, so amazing, amazing, amazing bit of uh, synchronicity or fort, fort, uh, fort, what's the word? I don't know. It's lucky is what I'm saying. But it's good because when my kids were little, they knew that if anyone rang on the telephone, because in those days one had a telephone, a landline, and said, hello, could I speak to Annika? They'd go, fuck off, because they knew it was a journalist, because no one ever calls me Annika. <laughs> so if anyone ever rang me at home, it was just not someone you ever wanted to talk to. So they were very well trained. So to... there was a lot of newspaper they were my stories. Filter. A lot of newspaper stories about Annika's foul-mouthed children. (laughs) Absolutely out of control. No, no, they absolutely knew. That was the filter, the word Annika. If anyone (laughs) said Annika, we knew foe. See, it's good. It's a, it's a, well, yeah, and you're a person who, we'll come on to it later, but you're a person who's had lots of different identities as well. Uh, And the thing, again, I was surprised to hear about you because I feel like the thing you'd say about you, you're very upbeat, you're very positive. When I was at university, there was a, Comedy troupe there had a song about you going, uh, Annika, Annika Rice, I want to thank you for being so nice. Oh, Annika, <laughs> Annika Rice. And I still remember it. It's a, it was a lovely song, but it was just about you being lovely and nice and charming. Uh, well, but I was you, very yeah. chuffed when I did Panto in Brighton once and you'd go into the pub and I was rhyming slam in, uh, rhyming slam in, in Brighton, Panto land. Because, you know, that people would go in and say, could I have a gin, a uh, tonic and plenty of Annika? Which was like ice. <laughs> okay, that's good. Which uh, I was charmed by. Yes, that's, for, you know, it's, yeah, that's about the best you could get. Uh, but I don't think yeah. there's nothing else to spring to mind. I mean, nice would be the other one, of course. But, um, but I feel like, you know, your, your childhood was a little bit, uh, less happy than I would I would have imagined, or you were, or you, or you, you were put upon by to do. You had to bring up your little sister almost because your your mum wasn't around too much. Is yeah, that right? no, it was an unusual upbringing. I was very much the family elastoplast. <laughs> but you know, lots of people, are, you know, and it was it's different times. It was just a, a very different type of childhood than, for example, you know, the childhood. I've been lucky enough to give my kids where you're so engaged with your children. You know, back in the 70s, honestly, I had to, honest, did I have any parents? I've no idea, <laughs> literally no idea. You just got on with it and I was very independent. And, you know, good thing, really, because I don't think I'd have done anything if I'd been happily ensconced with the no. chocolate cake in the kitchen. I just think I'd have just rolled over and said, could you tickle my back, please? Yeah. So as it happened, that edge... That feeling of the rug being pulled out of your, from you know your feet the whole time, yeah. and jeopardy. Um, again, it's something I talk about a lot because I think jeopardy is really good for you, and I you know I really think as human beings we respond to that. Sure. Actually, not too much. I'm not talking. Well, I, but I, yeah, not d- dangerous necessarily. But yeah. I mean, I think that your career is very much about chucking yourself into whatever's coming up. At yeah. Wholeheartedly. And, and hoping for the best. Yeah, just hoping for the best, <laughs> getting on with it quickly. Honestly, if you honestly had a problem, Richard, and said, could you sort this out? I'd be actually on the phone sorting it out as we're having this conversation because I do everything in the complete now because that was how my childhood was. It, was sure. just, it just had to be the now. Yeah. There was, there was no, there was, it was a very weird scene. And um, I... I Funnily enough, it gave me an ex- a weird skill, yes. which, I, which I've used in my career. So yeah. I, I think a bit of fear, a bit of jeopardy is no bad thing. Sure. Yeah. And you were you, well, also we have something in common, although my my phase came a little more embarrassingly late in that uh, you also did. You also shoplifted as a as a teenager in, in an attempt to get attention, really. Which yeah, I know I really hope that if I um, got caught shoplifting, um, I would be taken home in a police car and I could go, hello, everyone, it's me, <laughs> no, Annie. <laughs> um, but I, I never got caught because I just got too good at it. And yeah. I never I never stole things, can I just say, that, that I wanted. I mean, yeah, they were just anything to uh, mostly very large bras. I loved 
um, stealing bras for some reason. I mean, and huge bras, you know, comedy bras. Sure. I, I kind of thought if I'm going to be arrested, it would be really cool to, when they put it out of my bag, just a bra that's, you know, size 84 double Z. Um, anyway, they, I never got caught until eventually once I did get caught. And then you see my survival and the jeopardy thing kicked in. And instead of giving my name, I gave the name of this heinous girl in my class who bullied me. So I just gave her name and her address so that the police car would go around to speak to her parents. So when the crunch came, I tried to protect myself. Yeah, that's good. And that's a good yeah. piece of advice. I mean, we should all do that. You should give put a name out and we'll all do that when we're caught. I think that... <laughs> I think if someone's been really horrible to you, yeah. this girl Wendy made my life such hell and I was so unhappy at school. I mean, I used to just go into the woods near the school and just cry all the time. Um, and, you know, I felt she deserved a slight police record. Yes, I think she did. I think she's got now. I hope, I hope, she, I hope she's in prison for your crimes, Annika. Do you think I, she is? I, I, hope she, <laughs> I, hope she, I hope that was the first strike and then she did something else and went, imagine right, them life. going around and saying, hello, now, we think <laughs> that Wendy's been stealing braziers. <laughs> So it's hard to believe you, you that Annika Rice was uh, was a terrible thief and a liar, putting yeah. other people up, in, putting <laughs> other people into prison. But it's good. It's all. I think the thing about you, and I think the reason, um, one of the reasons people like you, is because you do. You seem like you know in in Treasure Hunt especially, and maybe challenge Annika a little bit. It was all of this very, you know, goody goody, very nice person. But you suspected underneath <laughs> there was at least something a little bit naughty, in whichever direction that you wanted to take that. But I think that is probably an accurate, yeah, accurate representation of you. I think a slight undercurrent, definitely. And um, yes, I will go to uh, to ends, to many ends, to champion the underdog. And uh, you know, it's nice that you said you think I'm nice <laughs> because I, I like to think that I will always champion the underdog. Yes. And the Wendy's of this world, I will put in prison. That's all I'm saying. I think with that, you know, there is, there is, although, you know, you sort of think from other people, you you would, I'd get her on and we'd find out she had some terrible story in her childhood that made her pay badly. But I think that's the, I think that kind of subtle revenge, because you're very clever. And I think, again, that's probably that's something that, um, you know, people didn't appreciate or didn't want to appreciate early on because they they saw you as this giggly girl running around in a helicopter. Well, that but is you're... very, very strange because I started my whole career at the BBC as a trainee journalist. Sure. So I did two years at the World Service working on programmes like The World Today and Outlook. And um, I had a news, uh, a career plan that was as as a journalist working sure. in a newsroom and I went out to Hong Kong from you know I'm still only about 19 because I'm I, I I slightly lied about my age lying uh, again last lie line. I'm gonna actually admit to <laughs> I did when I got the job at the BBC I slightly lied about my age because I actually did my A-levels when I was about 16 or 17 so I had to pretend I was you know 18 19 20 anyway so I so I had this career as a, as a journalist working in Hong Kong in the newsroom and then as a newsreader reader when the um, newsreader was ill one night and someone said, can anyone do news reading instead? Can anyone stand in? I went, oh, uh, yes, I can do that. Oh, years of training at the BBC. So I became a newsreader. And so my whole thing in, in this extraordinary career in Hong Kong was as a very serious young girl, Yeah, um, you know, doing my research, writing the news, presenting the news, all that sort of thing. So Treasure Hunt was like a really weird swerve curve that my career <laughs> took. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into at all, Richard. I, I, you know, no one had even heard of Channel 4 at that time. I hadn't even started up. So I went for this audition for this weird new adventure game show. I've never been in a helicopter. No one checked whether I'd mind being flung around without a door on. I mean, I just had no idea about it. And I had to do the audition with a load of um, sports blokes, like Emlyn Hughes and 
Daly Thompson and they were all running around and the cameraman just couldn't keep up with them because they were so competitive <laughs> and we just had a bit of a laugh and I heard him say to the producer oh god it'll have to be Annie she's literally the only one I could keep up with because <laughs> he's right behind me so I got I got this weird job on uh, involving a helicopter and running around with maps but I was still quite serious and for the first few programs um for the first few programs, the um, producer would say to me, can you speak a bit more? You know, sorry, I'm just showing you. Can you still see me? I yeah, can see you. We can see. Yeah. So for the first, first, you know, couple of programs, I didn't really say much because, again, I was being quite bookish and looking at all the maps and going, yes, I think we're about 32 degrees east of whatever. And then I suddenly thought, what the hell? And I just... <laughs> let myself go and um there followed you know six or seven years of just chaotic glory actually it was such a real laugh it's a great show well and you're you're very smart i watched one today and you are smart and you're chipping it they're saying stuff and they're not really listening to you but you're you're often giving the answers or you say you're confirming facts and stuff and you haven't got any books and stuff you're just working for your brain i'm now just trying to picture the show with emily hughes in it and i don't think it would have been a successful <laughs> Well, the, it's actually a French <laughs> format. It was done in France yeah. with this very hunky bloke called Pierre Dieulever, right. who, actually, who actually got killed. Oh. He was actually shot at by guerrillas. Not, not, not the during act. Treasure Hunt, no, surely. Yeah, filming a treasure hunt in no. France. I think. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, he's he's not with us any longer. <laughs> it's quite a dangerous program to do because you are just, you know, in a you know we did loads of um, programs overseas. Sure. You know, yeah. it's quite risky. I ended up in hospital quite a few times. Yeah, well, the one I saw, I watched one, there was just one on a website and it happened and it was just complete coincidence, but it opened up and you were in Somerset and you were you were sitting at the top of Cheddar Gorge, which is, and it was in 1984 or five, I guess. I would have been living in Cheddar at that time. As I was saying before, I have no memory to you. I have no memory of Treasure Hunt coming to Cheddar, but I must have been very excited about it. But um, it, if you, Yeah, if you were 16, you were doing something unspeakable. I, I was. I really wasn't. And, yeah. uh, you know, and just the fact that you would have been in my the same village as me would have been very exciting for me. But you, it, you'd hurt your ankle. So you showed Kenneth Kendall your hurt ankle in right at the beginning that you'd hurt in the previous episode. And also your, your uh, trousers. You were running all the time and your trousers had ripped. And you're oh, trying to, you're oh, trying to cover up your your ripped trousers. So well, the a... thing is, what the, I mean, really, at that time, <clears throat> television programs were largely you only saw people from the waist upwards, you know, behind a desk or something. Yeah. And this really was so groundbreaking. It was the first sort of reality TV show where there was no script or nothing. You just went off and, and did your own thing. And so, if you, uh, you know, one program, I got knocked, I get knocked over by a horse. <laughs> I'm actually unconscious, and somehow I, the adrenaline kicks in. Someone, I think Graham, the cameraman, slaps me around the face a bit, and we <laughs> carry on. But I end up in hospital afterwards, and that often happened. But during the show, we never stopped. No. <laughs> just kept running well it's, uh, it was bizarre it seemed really. incredible that the technology was good enough to be able to keep the link going i was just thinking well did you have to keep, stop and retake stuff where if the link broke down or did it always um, work the, i could sometimes i could barely hear what was you know the yeah. instructions being gave to me but it taught me um you know a whole style of programming so that's why the crew becomes so important you know my my style of presenting is very much to involve yes uh you know dave the sound man on jan and janica or you know frank and graham on on treasure hunt and keith the pilot because you know i realized we had to just somehow keep things going even if we had no idea where we were meant to be going because sure. you did we didn't stop and did you really stopped. not know did you, did you had you not rehearsed where you were going no not at all. And um, Kenneth was the same. Kenneth right. Kenneth. We were very boy scoutish about the whole thing. And if we ever found out one thing, we we came clean and they changed the whole course. Right. And we really we really didn't want to know. And it how lovely to get up to get off to work and not know what you're doing. There's no prepping. You just role yeah i mean that, that's got to be the i mean uh, trouble is I, I had so many years of working like that i can really only work like that now right. so that's why i devised the series of the challenge because where you literally again had no idea what was going on you suddenly had to 
build yeah. a community centre or something. I like that feeling of jeopardy back to my childhood. And I don't know whether people are, are aware that that's your fault. So Challenge Annika was you created the format and you've sold the format all over the world. So this yeah. is, again, this is, that's your brainchild yeah. again. It's and it's, a, and it's been a very... I mean, it's a very successful show here. You chose to end it, right, rather than the other way around. Yes, it was still... no, I chose. I chose to end it. I, I to be honest, we had um, done over sixty projects. You know, we'd we'd done some projects like the Romanian orphanage one, for example. You know, really stressful. And I'm still involved with all these projects thirty years on. You know, it's not they weren't quick fixes. And so each project is a huge part of my life. And uh, so, and so after we'd done uh, over 60 projects, I didn't really have any space in my life to take on any more projects because they all had a life after the challenge ended. Sure. Um, and sometimes they were really risky. I mean, we went to Croatia, for example, uh, post the Homeland War, and we were doing up a, a village school in a terrible, a war-torn, it was absolutely, you know, bombshell this whole village and we had serb snipers trained on us the entire time we were filming we had to be protected by the united nations and uh, you know we all left notes for our loved ones in our hotel room because we just thought you just get one stray bullet and that sure. could be us so so the the clever thing about challenge really was though the program went out you know before Noel's house party on the saturday evening bbc one prime time but actually the subjects we were dealing with were really quite serious, some of them. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the skill of the show was that we, we, we gave the BBC, we presented to them a fun, you know, hour long light entertainment programme that sat with a family, but you could take it at many different levels. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and there was this fantastic legacy of each of the projects and because the format's been sold around the world, there's, there's hundreds of projects all around the world. Yeah. So, amazing. you know, it's, it's sort of my life's work, sort of what I do now, even. It's incredible. I mean, it's. do you think it's down to you, Annika? Do you think that if, if it had been if it had been me running in and going, come and help me with this, people would have gone, nah, I don't they think I will. They have done it for you, do you Rich. They wouldn't have done it for me. They'd have done it for you. I mean, you're... There's it's it's you know, there's something about you that is is very uh, appealing. And I think it's more you're a very beautiful woman and you're still an incredibly beautiful woman. I don't know how this is possible. <laughs> you still you haven't changed at all. But there's a, there's a sort of life force in you. I think when you look at the photos of you in uh, in that time, especially, it's just that the, sort of this personality comes out. And I think well, the thing is, I genuinely feel very passionate about things. Yeah. And I just think if you, you know, if you've got passion, then people will follow, you know, yeah. because um, why wouldn't you? I, I, know, I mean, it was amazing that the thousands of volunteers who did just drop their lives to come and help us. And, you know, I will be forever indebted to all those people because uh, it, it really was quite extraordinary. And we really felt after we'd done all these series that uh, we, we ought to give it a break anyway, just to, yeah. to sort of let it rest and... See, Calm I, down. And, I, and I had to say hello to my children again. <laughs> hello, sons. I'm your mother. <laughs> I think every single man who took part in Challenge Annika only did it in the hope that you might. It gave them a chance that you might marry them. And that's the only reason they did it. And Richard, then they, you know, it... that's not true. You <laughs> could be asked as a 16 year old to turn up on a treasure hunt. I mean, you couldn't even be bothered. <laughs> I was too I was too nervous to do it. I'm amazed I can talk to you now. I'm, I'm amazed I've got through this far. <laughs> Without you turning... were doing something unspeakable behind the <laughs> the tour, wherever that is, the Glastonbury tour. You know, you, you know of my reputation. Um, <laughs> I do like a, I do like a pile of stones, but that's definitely true. Um, so, um, I mean, there's so much I want to talk to you about, and I don't want to get too hung up on uh, certain things. But I want, I wondered just looking through the IMDb again. You're on blankety blank about four or five times. Do you remember being on blank? I, I really like getting involved in that part of. Uh, of... Blankety blank because it was it, was it Les Dawson or Terry Wogan who did it in those days? Again, it was early eighties. Yeah. So I just, I mean, I just started doing Treasure Hunt. I was really quite overwhelmed by this whole fame game because, you know, I didn't, it wasn't like, you know, nowadays a lot of people just want to be famous and rich. And uh, I just, uh, I I came to the whole career thing, that part of my career in such a roundabout way via news and current affairs. Yeah. 
Christmas. So I was absolutely like a rabbit caught in the headline with the, this fame game, I have to say. But I ha was so thrilled to be asked on Blankety Blank. I remember I asked my dad along and we just went, oh my God, I've made it. This is it. This is actually, I don't want to do anything else. I just want to be on Blankety Blank. There's certain things in your life, I bet you feel the same, where you really think, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> I guess in the 1980s, Blankety Blank would have been it. No, but, yeah. to no one else, but to me, <laughs> it was up there. To me, I can't even think what the equivalent now would be pointless or something. I think uh, Task, see, uh, Taskmaster, which I was on, was my one. So I like once I did Taskmaster, oh. I just thought, I don't care now. I don't want to do anything else. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I have to say, all I want to do is Taskmaster. I'll, I will oh, actually retire. I, I'm gonna, I am going to suggest you to Alex Horn for Taskmaster because he does sometimes ask me. And you what would be a mate. You'd be too I'd good. Love, You'd be I'd, too good for Taskmaster. You'd I'd win by miles. It. It, that's just my kind of dream because I just love, uh, you know, my favourite things. I've just done Bake Off, for example. Yes. And my favourite thing is, forget the baking, but, you know, I had this uh, thing that I would, for some reason, when they, when they rang and said, what do you want to cook or bake or whatever you call it? I had no idea. <laughs> they'd only given me one day's notice. Obviously, someone fell ill or something. So I had no time to even think about it. So I, was, I looked at a photo across the room of me abseiling from a helicopter. And I suddenly thought, no, that's what I'll do. I'll be in a helicopter, be abseiling down onto a mountaintop. My sons will be in the helicopter. And I, in my head, I went off onto this... Was I on drugs at the time? Honestly, I wasn't. I just <laughs> thought of this idea. But then the whole joy was working out the construction of it rather than learning how to bake a cake. Right. But you won though, right? So you still won. But I only won because of that portrait I painted of Paul Hollywood. Well. I knew, I knew when he saw that portrait I'd won. It was only the first <laughs> task. Because he wanted to take it home afterwards. Right. <laughs> and uh, he wasn't going to, I wasn't going to give it to him unless I won. <laughs> so I had it. But what you didn't see on Bake Off, behind Paul's uh, portrait, I'd done one of Prue. So I whisked off Paul's and there was a stark naked one of Prue, <laughs> just with red glasses on. And they they cut that. I <laughs> thought that was just not appropriate for a family show. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a shame. That sounds very good. I um, mean, Prue is. Don't you love Prue? I mean, I have such fierce love for Prue. I nearly couldn't operate during that show. <laughs> it's a very good show. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's And you recreate. You were running... You ran in in your uh, treasure hunt gear, didn't you, in the beginning? So it was uh, looking for the tent. Again, protect... See, this is... Like, the other, the other thing I was going to say is that you're in that spit... There's a spitting image sketch about you. How did you feel uh, oh, about God, being in spitting image? spitting image? Oh, my God. Well, there was a period of my life when I hardly dared turn the telly on because there would be Bobby Davro or someone running through shop in a treasure hunt jumpsuit doing something or there'd be a carling black label lag with the, the crew flying off over a mountain and the people turning to each other and saying, I bet she drinks Carling Black Label. I didn't even actually have to be on telly myself because <laughs> I was on telly. And then the ultimate was, I was eight months pregnant at the time and I wandered through and the telly was on and I suddenly heard that bloody helicopter. And that was always the sign that there was going to be another sketch and it was spitting image. And I'm going, Kenneth, I'm going to have a baby. And it's honestly the funniest thing because <laughs> Kenneth then gets out of bed in his pyjamas, puts on a headset and starts directing me to the hospital. And then there's this whole thing of me running around going, I'm having a baby, where's the hospital? And then eventually after chaos, um, really very funny, um, out come a film crew. <laughs> <laughs> I give birth to the film crew. As well as a baby. And yeah, it's it's quite graphic. Is that basically the, your your birth canal is depicted yes, in in yes, foam? Yes, Kenneth saying um, yes, <laughs> Annie, you're there in the birth canal. You're just coming out yes, now. We see it coming out, which is you know, I think your birth canal might be the only one that's appeared on prime time. Admittedly, in, in can you imagine? Puppet because my, my kids were very little <laughs> during the high high all this sort of time of my career. So, and I totally protected them from TV. I mean, they've honestly never seen an episode of Treasure Hunt until very recently. Right. Son found it on YouTube and went, what the hell is that? You're being arrested. You're landing on a submarine. Anyway, um, but for them to um, 
Yeah, I did show, I did some stand up quite recently and I wanted to use a clip from it. So I, sh I showed them the clip of me giving birth and I mean, they were white faced. <laughs> It's quite a shock, isn't it? I think that to your... see your mum in that, you know, and then just, and it's sort of yourself as well, because there is a baby involved in there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I was quite, I wrote for Spitting Image. I didn't write that one. Uh, but, uh, Did you? It, yeah, towards oh, the end, one? towards the end. It was just the last couple of series, so it would have been after that. But uh, I, we hardly had anything on. Uh, but we did get a couple of bits on. But yeah, I would have. I think I would have gone. <laughs> that's a bit far. But it's, it's yeah, as you say, it's a it's a funny sketch. But uh, yeah. I hadn't seen it for for all those decades, and uh, seeing it again now, it's honestly, it's a it's. I hadn't quite realised because when you're living in 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 the middle of something, you don't realise how very strange your life is sure. because it's like that every day, Richard. <laughs> something very strange is happening to you every single day in some shape or form. I mean, it really was a absolutely very strange 20 years or so. Um, and, and and so during, while I was in it, I, I sort of uh, just got on with it. And it's only now looking back that I'm going, oh my God, that's verging on the, you know, I don't know what. But Let's also see. you 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 sort of unusually, I think, you sort of walked away from it yourself, obviously to go back to like art and to your family and to be a mum. But you actually sort of made the decision to, because you were yeah. on every, you literally were on everything. You did the holiday program. You did, you know, you you did. There were several other shows Thank you were in. You're so well researched. Of course, but I remember as well. But you what were you, you were you were like a, a huge star, and most people kind of wait for, for things to go wrong or to hope things go right. But you no. made to make that decision to walk away. And was that was that because it was too weird as well? Was fame too weird to you wanted but to have a normal life? Fame's too weird. Um because remember it wasn't something I was craving and wanted you know, I yeah. I was I started off from a very different point of point in my life. Um fame was too weird. Uh it was all too intense. I had very small children and I had paparazzi the whole time on the doorstep. I couldn't take them out of the house. I used to have a box of five pound notes by the front door. And when there were, you know, gang of them out there, I'd go out and say, listen guys, do you have a family? And they'd go, yeah, got a kid. I said, when you go home at night and they say, hey, did you have a nice day, daddy? Do you say to them, I have just totally fucked up some young mum's day? when she's out and about with her children. And and I said, look, I'm gonna give you some fibers, go and have a beer, but leave me alone because what you're doing is just abuse. And um, honestly, it was awful. But I spent so much time doing that, um, that I just thought, I'll just stop working. I'll yeah. just become unfamous. That's the only way I can actually have privacy for, for myself to be a mum and bring up my kids without us always, um, you know, we'd, we'd get out of a cab and somehow there'd be a photographer there. It was really, it really freaked me out. Sure. And it got to the point where, you know, there was one occasion where I actually grabbed someone's camera and threw it to the ground. And then all the punters were standing around going, go on, Annika, <laughs> go on, beat him up. <laughs> and it was before camera phones. Otherwise that would have, you know, been quite a public episode, I guess. Anyway, it, to me, to my mind, it was a very easy decision to make. I just thought I'll, Go, go away, I'll do something completely different. And I went into the BBC, who had a very successful Saturday night programme and said, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to say goodbye, sure. just for a little while. And actually it sort of went on quite a long time because I just needed that gap. So I, I took myself off to art school and did completely different things. But what I didn't realise, of course, Richard, is you don't become unfamous. <laughs> It doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> Still, wherever we went, it was just I wasn't newsworthy anymore. No, but you know, also so recognised. You know, you literally look the same now as you did then. I mean, you could try and make yourself look a bit different, but you look the same. Oh, I was... had wigs. I did, but you don't want to go out. You don't want to go out with your kids in a dark no. wig. You know, no, no. you just don't want them to feel there's some sort of shame around your life. You know, I wanted us to just go to school on the bus and, you know, blah, you know. Yeah. So I, I did pretty well at that. And honestly, when they were little, they thought I was a lorry driver, I think, because they remembered <laughs> vaguely I used to be in a truck on challenge. Right. 
because they used to play in the truck and on the buggy, you know, when they were very little. And so I think they just thought I was sort of some sort of lorry driver. And then I was at home a bit more, which was really nice. And then I started painting pictures, which was fine, you know. Yeah. Well, that's great. And now, as you just mentioned, you are doing, you're doing, well, you were before lockdown doing stand up, which, uh, which I think, you know, this, the subjects you have and the life you've had does make a lot of sense. Um, and so you've done one stand up show uh, about what happened to your Madame Two Swords head because you were in Madame Two Swords for a long time and they they swapped you over between Treasure Hunt and Challenge Annika and you were still you were still there with the different costume on. Uh, and then obviously once you're not on TV, they get rid of the they get rid of they the body. They just melt you down. Yeah. Channel four came to interview me about the legacy of being a Madame Two Swords um, um statue and I was really chuffed and I was quite smug talking about how lovely it was to hang in the foyer. I was the first statue anyone saw I was hanging on a rope ladder and a jumpsuit with a paintbrush in one hand or whatever and they went and how do you feel now you've been melted down and I didn't know <laughs> I did not know at that point I had been it was like tumbleweed floating across the city and I went oh oh well you know one has one's innings uh of thinking shit what have they done with my head because I didn't care about the body because obviously the body can be melted down and be Kim Kardashian's left buttock, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you do worry where your head is somehow because yeah. they, and and if you Google Wookiee Hole, ladies and gentlemen, you just go onto your search engine and just, you will see, if you put Wookiee Hole, Madame Two Swords, you will see rows and rows and rows of decapitated heads just sitting on these shelves. And it really, I decided that's, that's just not appropriate. And so I, I made, I, I did this whole stand up, which was, I wanted to find uh, my head. And it yeah. was called Help My Heads in Wookie Hole. And it became a kind of a search for my head, search for my real head, you know, because I'd had such a sort of weird life. Um, so, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a fun show to do. And I did it at the Backyard Comedy Club. Sure. The weird thing is I never found my bloody head. Madame yeah. Two Swords won't divulge where my head is. And and people on Twitter were really being helpful and saying, I swear you might be in Blackpool somewhere. I think I saw you next to the Green God Goddess and Barry Manilow or, you know, whatever. The, there were sightings of my heads all over the UK. Even some thought that they might, you know, there's places like the Imperial War Museum where they have people in trenches <laughs> and, and someone really genuinely thought they might have put me in a trench with a pith helmet on or something <laughs> anyway, it was just getting out of control anyway yeah you know though i mean you're a very nice woman annika i hate to tell you what's happened to your head but i it's obvious what? what's happened to your head well someone's got it in their house and they've dressed it up as you they said mm. there's a bloke in japan who's got who's made his own scarlett Hansen robot that looks just like a, that you know he looks he looks creepy and you know what he's up to with that so robot on his own. I care about that head. That head I is love... being that head is also, being abused by someone in the I in... loved the beautiful young man who made my head because you have millions you have a many hours of yeah. fitting your head with calipers measuring every bit and it was such an intimate thing I had with this man who made me and you know it was I want my head back, Richard. I yeah. just want it back. I think he's got it. I think that guy's got it. I heard that he had a photo of... Does he have a photo of the head by his bed? You met his next-door neighbours. He's got the head. He's got you in the little... He's got a special Annika Rice room. Oh, and you're God, all that... dressed up in your jumpsuit. And he goes in there. The body hasn't been melted down. There's Some of it's been melted down in little places to, to help. There's something quite not right about the whole thing. There is. Meant... So I think I didn't want to tell you it, but, you know, I'm a man. <laughs> I know how men's brains work. And it well, disgusts anyway. me. But it, oh. what a brilliant, what a brilliant subject! But I love that. I love the. It's a perfect show. So you only did it at the back. If you're not, if you're going to take it to the Edinburgh Fringe if that ever happens. Well, um, I did it at the Backyard Comedy Club, and it was the second one I'd done. The first one had been about my um, secret agent, Clemmy Hart. Um, it was a, a, a piece about her that Radio Four came and recorded, um, because back in the day, during this period where I wasn't working um, officially anymore. Um, 
I still needed sort of some kind of representation because obviously the inquiries still came in. So I invented, I, I looked around for a, a secret, you know, someone who could really represent me and look after me and know me well and not send me off for ridiculous jobs because I kept getting fired by all my, I, try, I went through four agents in a row and they all fired me because I just didn't want to do the work they were offering me. I mean, one job, do you, do you know who Mark Curry is? Of course I know who Mark Curry is. Well, there was a cookery program, Curry and Rice. And this agent couldn't understand that I did not want to do this cookery program. I mean, I love Mark Curry, but I did not want to be stranded down the M3 in a hangar where they were going to film it. I wanted to actually to spend my children's childhood with them, not Mark Curry. Anyway, that was the final straw. That was the last agent that sacked me because I just wouldn't say yes to any work. So um, I decided to find the perfect person myself. And in the end, it was me. And Clemmy became my alter ego. And I had a lot of fun with her. It became like a sort of performance art because she was very popular. <laughs> and uh, people loved dealing with her and she had adventures richard i know I've, I've i've heard about this and uh oh my wife who's had you on her drunk women solving crime show says hello katie wilkins oh and so she told me about this story as well so i find this so people it was mainly by email right but you would also put on a scottish accent which i love that's what I that's do. the kind of thing i do when if you have to yeah. talk to her on the phone no i mean she had a fully i had to give her a whole backstory because she was so popular she had a, a puppy called kenneth yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she was a tireless charity campaigner because I had to invent reasons because it started fine on email because back in the day, people were quite polite and formal on email. So it was, dear Clemmy, I understand you represent Annika, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and that was sort of fine at that stage. No one ever said, hey, Clem, which happened quite soon <laughs> after. Let's meet for a drink after work. And then would you like to join the BBC netball team? And the thing is, because Clemmy was a laugh on the emails, uh, producers and production companies love dealing with her because they're so used to stuffy agents. And here suddenly there was this breath of fresh air who was completely, I mean, strictly, I remember back in the 2000s, you know, asked me to take part and she just sent one line back. Have you seen her dance? And then another, <laughs> and then another line later when they were still pursuing it saying, could she have two, two, um, uh, teachers, do you think one on each side for ballast and support? And, and she just, gave the sort of answers that left and no one had any to come back to really they didn't know how to follow it through um but she was she was popular and it got very difficult i had this huge sasco wall planner up with people <laughs> in the house who had to go off at various times of the day and be clemmy and i had this i was quite useful because my boyfriend at the time was a spy so if it got really tricky and they needed to know the price for a corporate event or something we had to clue um i'd say to him could you today your job is to find out what davina mccall might get for this sort of job and he'd go how do i do that and i'd go you're a spy for god's sake just go and spy are you sure he was a spy because he might have just said he was a sp spies aren't meant to say they're spies annika he might have just said he was a spy to impress you do you think yeah he impressed me for about seven years <laughs> it's good Good that was a waste of time. <laughs> I thought I was living with James Bond. Anyway, <laughs> and, and I had lodgers in the house and right. um, they were brilliant. They were really fun. They were in their early 20s and they had full-time jobs, but they were very up for being clemmy if a, a contract had to be handed over or they, you know, someone said, Clemmy, we really must meet you for a quick drink just to go through the schedule. So I had to brief them at breakfast and then they'd go off and be clemmy after work and come back and it was just fun and how did you get did you get caught or did you just give up did you give up on this uh, another lie another subterfuge it, for it got so it, the money started pouring through the door uh, because uh clemmy said that she was this charity campaign and she couldn't do things after work after a while because she was running the marathon for one of annika's charities and everyone they went oh you are an inspiration clemmy <laughs> so they started so it had just got out of control so uh she had a baby okay so she he went off on maternity leave. That's, that doesn't get rid of her forever, though. No, I know. <laughs> she might She might be coming back. I am actually I am actually writing a sitcom at the moment. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. It's just a It's such a, a funny thing. It's a crazy 
but brilliant thing to do, which sort of sums it's it's Annika Rice, isn't it? Well, this is who you well, are. It's crazy. Well, I was at, it was a period in my life when I had the kids and, uh, you know, I didn't I just didn't want that world at the moment. You know, I was busy painting and just doing different things. And so um, it sort of it enabled me to have one foot in the door, if you like, and still yeah. feel part of that exciting show busy world <laughs> without actually ever doing any work. But the thing is, Clemmy unwittingly did become this quite dark, malevolent force in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, she, I remember there was one job where I was invited to have a detox up the Himalayas, some side of colonic irrigation up the Himalayas is how it was put. I, I think I honestly, was offered that one as well. I think I was, I didn't do that. Are you? Yeah, I was offered that one. <laughs> but Clemmy said, Annika would love to do that more than anything in the world. <laughs> But she can't go. But could I instead? And it was just getting difficult. It was just getting difficult. So um, she had to go. Sometimes you do have to kill off the things you love, Richard. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, I myself work a lot with alternate versions of myself. That's what I do in the snooker that, that is being postponed tonight. Oh yeah. So uh, yes, and you know, and I do, I do a lot with ventriloquist dummies now as well. So I do, and I think we're on the same page. Uh, have you got a dummy there? Have I've got, got, I've got lots of dummies here for you. I've done, I would like to see. I'll show you. The, I'll show you the respectable. Let me I feel it. quite embarrassed because that, I that's me. Got... Look at that. That's me. I see. That's quite an easy one to do because it's got the same. Yes. Voice, isn't it? Uh, this is the. This is what started it. This is my my great granddad made this one. This is where we. That's where it began. So this is a bit scary, but this is and he's a bit broken. God. This is Ali. Hello, Ali. It's lovely to meet you. You're a very. She... You're a lovely girl and a little drunk. Oh my God, that's your grandfather's. My great grandfather made it. So it was made in 1892. Oh my God, that's such a nice legacy. It is. Isn't that lovely to have that? Except I just use it for swearing. So I don't think he'd be very happy. But luckily he's dead. So um, what, when, when you're with your kids, you just bring bring up the puppet and swear profanities and then say to the kids, it wasn't me. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's better. the kids do like, the, they like the king of the world who's disappeared. Oh, here's the, this is the king of the world. That's this, oh, this is the kids' very much. And the king of the world. Ah! That's the king of the world. There you go. We, you know, you can tune into this one on a different day. That's Thursday nights on Twitch, the Twitch channel. Oh, I'm going to do Thursday nights. That's going to be me. <laughs> you, you should Lovely. have a Twitch. You should definitely have a Twitch channel. I mean, I think that... I, Mar I, I love that. Yeah. I think that Mark Curry... It's the, the Mark Curry story is just the... It's the rudeness of just going, we're putting these two people together just because... There's no reason you and Mark Curry should be together. Never even met the guy. Just you, you can't do it. That, that is what TV has become. I have thought of one while you were talking. We get Johnny Depp, Stephen Fry and Zoe Ball and you, and then we can have deep fry rice balls. Richard, you're good. So that if is... the four of you all hosting a show, we've got... Can we quite... keep this going, please? Yeah. Can we open this up to your audience? Because this could run and run. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they will come up with many, many things. So, so we don't need to worry about that too much. So, uh, yeah, so you look... Well, we've, this, we've nearly done an hour already, Annika. It's crazy. We've gone through, I haven't even asked you any emergency questions. I'm going to ask how, you... How are you, though? Can we just get back to you, Richard? I'm all right. I'm how right. are you? Well, I'm how clearly... are your nether regions? How's there... it all going on down there? Well, it's, I'm preferring it. I think what having it one... Because is... low... you've just got one now. I've just got one, and it's kind of gone quite central. And yeah. I, they were quite big. My the, Especially the one that was gone was quite a big one, and it got bigger. That's why it became a problem. And it's Ooh. just a lot more comfortable with that. I mean, you know, this it's is sort of like elephantitis size. You know, <laughs> was... if you sit was... on it and bounce on it. It was always it got a bit nearly to that size, but it was always even before it was a problem. It was a bit big, and now I go running and just put on. You used to have to adjust yourself and all do all sorts, yeah. and now yeah. it's just bang, and you're running. It's not getting in the way. It's not wobbling around. Yeah. It's good, and the, you know, I've got two kids. I don't need any more kids, so yeah. there's still a backup boy there. But you, yeah, I was going to say, you could still there's still enough in one little sack, isn't yeah, there? There is. So you, could you have know, millions more with that little sack. It's always always a dream of mine to talk to you about my balls, Annika, and uh, thank you for making that come true. My deep fried well, rice balls. Um, enough. <laughs> that's <laughs> I'll ask you an emer I'm going to ask you a couple of emergency questions just because I should. This is what I do. They're, they're fine. Don't have to worry. Okay. Um, I will ask you, Annika Rice. Have you ever seen a ghost? Uh, 
I am interested to hear. Yes. Well, I haven't seen one, but I've heard one. Have you? <laughs> Not even joking. This is, a, we, we had a house for a while in the countryside. And when the children were very little, when they were in bed, uh, we'd be sitting down watching the telly and we'd hear footsteps across the, you know, above us. Mm. And the kids were very little, so they weren't of an age where they'd get out and make such heavy uh, footsteps. So we'd run up and think, it's weird, what's that? And um, there was just definitely, definitely someone up there walking around. Yeah. But weirdly, it never felt frightening. It might have been someone living in the attic and just came down every now and again for chips. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> That's much more, it's I more was, scary than a ghost, isn't it? But um, we had um, uh, a friend of mine who s did see the did see a ghost. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah. But I didn't find it frightening. I just thought it was rather sweet because the house we lived in did used to be a sweet shop. So I just okay. thought, you know, got to be a nice ghost, isn't it? Yeah, but again, I, I hate to bring in, you're such, you've got such a positive outlook on the world. What I think about Sweet Shop is that the, it's either going to be nice or it's going to be really unpleasant and that some horrible man came to get a pocket full of sweets to tempt children away, died in your attic, and then he's stomping around going, why did I die up here? I had a pocket full of sweets. I was ready to yes. go. And then oh I, just God. because I was a, trying to kidnap kids, the villagers killed me in the attic and now I'll be here forever. That's what I think that ghost was. I'm glad I wasn't living with you at the time <laughs> because at the time we thought it was a really friendly ghost and we let it go. And in the end, we couldn't even be bothered to go and check on the kids because we just knew something was going on up there but didn't seem to affect anyone. Let's move on. Okay. Well, I'm going to take you saying I'm glad I wasn't living with you at the time to mean that you would have been glad to live with me at another time and I'm taking that as a huge victory for myself. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I'll, 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 I'm interested in this because your art, which we can see behind you, I'll just put you on your own and so people can see this is incredible, beautiful art that you're mm. doing behind you. And I was um, interested in, um, uh, I have a qu question about uh, if all the world's art galleries and museums got together and said, we, we love you, Annika, we love all the charity work you've done and all your TV shows. And we decided to gift you one item from any museum or art gallery in the world that you can keep. Is there a work of art or a, an artefact that you would like to have in your house? Suddenly we seem to have gone quite highbrow. I thought, thought I'd end highbrow after Slightly all the pedo me. jokes. Well, I think I would have one of Rodin's sculptures. Okay, that's nice. Is there, yeah. a, is there a particular one you uh, like? No, but I have <laughs> got, I can put, I, if I could just go in that room, I could bring you this beautiful book I got of all his line drawings and sculptures. Sure. And I, I just love the en his energy. And was draw was painting something you were you were always doing you know from a little or was this did this no. come up when you when I was when I was a schoolgirl I was honestly too busy ferrying my little sister to nursery and trying to get through physics and chemistry and all my work I never saw an art room at school yeah. I never did art at school and it was only later uh, my husband at the time gave me a book called Step by Step Art School and an easel and a smock because I wanted to be more like a G Jane Austen heroine, because yeah. I'd just always been working all my life. I hadn't really, I hadn't ever learned anything. I hadn't, I didn't feel I had any accomplishments. Sure. So um, I, I took up the piano and I took up painting and I did a bit of singing just so that I could be like a Jane Austen heroine. Right. And painting has led me on the most lovely adventures. I mean, the most recent lovely adventure and friendship that's, that's happened is that um, Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones just got out, got in touch out of the blue and said, I really like your line drawings. Um, this is when I actually had a website up. There's not one up at the moment. I'm so embarrassed to say it. <laughs> I haven't got my act together on this at all. But, um, and, you know, through that, through a chat about art, he then said, come out and hear us play in, in Paris and I just you know got out there and I'm backstage with Ronnie in his dressing room thinking this is so exciting and it's all because of painting and art and I've had many adventures like that there's something about people who paint <laughs> why are you laughing I'm just because your life is an adventure everything in your life is an adventure just this everything just because of the your attitude is absolutely the, the, your attitude that makes it happen but everything happens to you it's, it's brilliant 
Well, no, but everything happens to everyone, but you've just got to, you've just got to <laughs> open yourself up to opportunities because I, I just think fate, life is a, just a fateful journey, isn't it? And one, talk about sliding doors, you know, one step that way or one the yeah. other way leads to something completely different. Yeah, right. And do you, do you yeah. regret, I know that you were, you were interviewed by uh, Cubby Broccoli to be a Bond girl and you, you yeah. gave him short oh. shrift. I, I really regret that now. I was so bloody women's Libyan feminist. I mean, not I'm not saying that. I'm proud of that, but I'm quite annoyed at my younger self because when she asked, when he asked me to come along and talk to him, I thought he meant to be Bond. <laughs> so I went along thinking, yeah, that'll work. That'd be good. I could do my own stunts. I'm I'm up for that. I'm you know 26 at the time, whatever. And then he talks about being a Bond girl. I went. Oh, and just literally walked out, you know, just yeah. wasn't, didn't even register, was just wasn't interested in that. And so, yeah, there's lots of things like I that. I think that was the right decision, though. I mean, you know, because I think also at that time, those films would, you know, well, it, it'd well, sort of be nice to be in them, but it would also, you know, well, just been know. in bed with well, Roger Moore and then shot by someone. That's all that would have happened to you. I wouldn't mind being pussy, pussy galore coming out of the beach with a gun down her pants. Okay. We can work that. We can arrange that. For you. Even that could still, it could definitely still my bucket list. We've got uh, flea bags right in them now, so we can get Annika Rice in there. We can get you in a, a Bond film, no problem at all. No, but you know what I mean? I, I realised later that if I'm going to be on Spitting Image, you know, giving birth <laughs> with a camera up my birth canal, I might as well just have a bikini walking. You no, know what I mean? It's perspective. I didn't have perspective. Yeah in the early days because it was all just so overwhelming what was happening yeah yeah so so are, you, are we going to do more stand-up once the once we're back yes. in clubs yeah yes definitely and as i said i'm i'm hoping that clemmy will um come back as a sitcom yeah but, um, because there's 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 she had a lot of adventures um so <laughs> i i really i love doing the stand-up richard i you, you guys and girls have just been having such a nice time and i had no idea it was so blissful i really well, enjoyed yeah but you it's again it's the right personality to do it but also it is i think people who've lived a life and then come to it and have stories to tell that doesn't happen so much anymore so it's i kind of like people coming to it a bit later um, because yes. because you've lived a life and then you've got stuff to talk about and I think you know I think that's that head the one about head the head the, the, that kind of head uh, is such a, a you know when it, when it can take you into your, into your own head as well as this false head that's a brilliant show so you must take it to Edinburgh you could win best newcomer at the Edinburgh Fringe do you know Richard can I just say you're being terribly nice I, well, I'm a, I'd only have people on here I like and I love you Annika Rice uh, but, I, uh, but it's but I, I hope we meet and can I just say I love doing your wife's um, podcast I was thinking of it the other day and uh, could you ask her if I could come back and do another one because I really <laughs> enjoyed it I didn't understand the premise at all I hadn't done any research. I turned up, we, we did it in the Isle of Wight. That's and it was right, solving yeah. a, a, a crime, slightly drunk. Yes, well, drunk. sometimes very drunk with my wife. My wife's the drunkest one. Oh, she, yes. I think she, she was ill, though. I think on the, at the Isle of Wight one, she was, she'd got food poisoning or something. Because I think she was, it wasn't the, the drink. So I don't think she hung around, did she? If I'm right, I might be wrong about that. But oh, she did get very I, ill. It went in a whirl because suddenly, I, I talk about surreal life. Suddenly, I'm in Ventnor in the Isle of Wight with... <laughs> some strange comedians and we're drinking quite a lot and talking about a, a crime that we're solving but yeah. it's really good fun it's good well, i hadn't i didn't know what it was really but it was good fun yeah all right don't support my podcast by saying how good my wife's podcast is also you just saying i'm going to be up with you and then you brought my wife up and ruined everything, Annika Rice, oh, right there. Do you, do you sit at the breakfast table comparing <laughs> audience figures and things? Uh, no, we do not do that. She, she, we're very... Uh, well, I try to be funny. You know, I like being funny all the time, but my wife is, is, is certainly in the morning is not in the mood for laughs. <laughs> oh, God. I'm You're... very I'm very bright in the morning and ready to go, and my wife is... It takes her a little time to to get ready to go. To crank up. It does. So do, you, so do you do all the early morning sort of ch children I try, I try I tend to yeah so it's I tend to and I've got a bit more patience with the kids in the morning and I enjoy them being sort of naughty which she doesn't enjoy them being naughty it's, it's probably the perfect way to parent isn't it right she's she's a bit stricter than I am <laughs> I know because I, because I, I was bringing up my kids largely on their own I brought them up completely uh I mean I didn't really think 
I had to sort of bring them up quite gender neutral in a way, yeah. quite ahead of the time because I didn't have time to do all that thing of going to football matches because yes. they were boys. Yes. So one boy called himself Nicola Wendy for a whole year at nursery school and we just put his name on the peg and the yeah. teacher was fine. He just called himself Nicola Wendy. And I kind of, you know, another child just wanted to wear a bucket on his head for quite a long time. I quite like that, you know, letting them... Sort of Absolutely. Be... Well, it's terrible when it gets, you know, that's it. My son's a little bit the same like that. And he loves because uh, because he looks up to his sister so much. He loves dress. He dresses up. He got an, a, a, the whatever the Anna or from Frozen. He got the other dress of the other yes. one for Christmas because he wanted to play with his, his sister. And to to discourage that would seem yeah. so weird, you know, and, and people. I be know. Like, I think it's just really sad if uh, because boys just love wearing fairy dresses. Yeah. Turns out, who yeah. knew? And it's so weird, me having all these very girly, you know, not girly boys even, but just they love dressing up and, you know, whatever. Um, and as a child, I was such a tomboy and just always <laughs> wore dungarees and was sat on a roof with a dumper truck, you know, playing dinky toys. So yeah. it wasn't as if I was foistering sort of pink onto them. <laughs> you know, just... It's so difficult to know. Is that, that's the thing. You don't know what, what you're doing subconsciously. You don't know what effect you're having. And whether they, it's nature versus nurture, it's a very good subject for a stand-up show. You'll yes. do that. Do, can you, you can do that one next. And I'll get on to that. Thank that you. One. It's Thank uh, you. one of Shakespeare's main themes. I'm sure you can beat him at, at that. You can beat anyone. Look, I'm going to let you go. I, I would ha happily talk to you for the rest of your life. Uh, I hope I get to see you, and my wife would be delighted how much you love her. I love her. Damn so close um do you can come and live with us in a we could have a, a we could be a thruple we could we could all meet on the riverbank yeah. and ignore each other okay let's do that next time yeah okay um thank you so much for doing this i'm really looking forward to seeing your shows when you come back and i'm very looking forward to that sitcom which will be fantastic ladies and gentlemen the amazing goddess annika rice thank you very much uh we'll be back next week haven't got a guest yet i was too excited about having annika rice on see ya goodbye How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>